All right, welcome back to uh, our series on And They Worshipped the Dragon. I guess this will be part two. Now, this is the thing. When did Satan fall? Really good question. Let's take a look. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 12. We're going to probably read the whole chapter here. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, I did a Bible study on this. This was symbolic of Joseph and his brethren this is this is Israel verse 2 yeah and if you're interested I'll uh, I'll find it it's on one of my playlists uh, let's see I have over 900 Bible studies so you know what it's I'm at the point I can't even I don't even know where half the stuff I've done is anymore verse 2 but if you ask, I'll see if I can find it for you. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Who are these stars? They're angels, people. Job 38 is going to prove that to us. The stars, sometimes stars are lights up in the sky. Sometimes they're angels. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, this has a couple of applications. When Eve had Cain and Abel, didn't Cain try didn't Cain kill Abel? I mean, uh, didn't yeah, didn't Cain kill Abel? Yeah. The dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour a child as soon as it was born. Didn't Herod try to kill all the children in Bethlehem, trying to kill Jesus when Joseph was warned in a dream to go down into Egypt? Oh, yeah. And she brought forth a man-child. So, obviously, this is talking about Mary. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman, this is the church, Israel, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 7 real quick. Verse 1. Then said the high priest, are these things so? And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, listen. Hearken. The glory of God appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Charon, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans, and dwelt in Charon, and from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into his land, wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, not so much as to set his foot on, yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession, and to his seed, or children, and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And God spake on these wise, that his seed should so sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring him them into bondage, and entreat them evil four hundred years." Well, that's that was the uh, the uh, slave enslavement in Egypt. 
Verse 7, And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac, and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. Now remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And the twelve patriarchs are the twelve tribes, the twelve brothers, the twelve tribes of Israel. Verse 9, And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him, and delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Uh, not everybody knows this, but during the time of Joseph, the Pharaoh who was king of Egypt was of the Hyskos, H-Y-S-S-K-O-S, -S -S I believe is how you pronounce it or spell it. The Hyskox were, um, I might be pronouncing it wrong, but they were a Semitic tribe. They were basically cousins to the Israelites. They may not have been the chosen seed necessarily, but they were not native Egyptians. They conquered Egypt. And then when the Egyptians rose up and, and threw them, you know, conquered them back, uh, that was the Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. So for when Joseph was in Egypt, he was being ruled by a Semitic cousin. Uh, and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Chanan and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. Remember the famine in the land, right? But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred, threescore and fifteen souls. That's 75 people. So Jacob went down to Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and were carried over into Shechem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emor, the father of Shechem. And when the time of the promise drew near, when God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. Well, these were the, the actual Egyptians. The same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil entreated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. In which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in, learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full, forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed that uh, he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. But they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as he strove, and would have set them at one another, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did this, his neighbor wrong, thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou kid didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begat two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. No, it wasn't George. 
the bush. Never mind. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And you know what? When I was very early in my walk with the Lord, that's, that's what I prayed to. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. There is no misunderstanding of who that is. Uh, some people call, uh, come up with all these weird names claiming Hebrew and this and that and the other, you know, Yahua and Yahushua and Yeshua and all this other stuff. But I tell you what, when you talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know who you're talking about. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groanings, and am come down to deliver them, and now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. All right, verse 36. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me, him shall ye hear. This is he. He who? Jesus. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Did you hear that? The church in the wilderness was with Moses. This is he that was in the church, church, not the synagogue, the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. You see, the church was in the wilderness with Moses. You see, the church is Israel, and Israel is the church. Turn to Galatians 3, verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in, G in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as been, have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You don't become Abraham's seed because you believe. You believe because you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 12. Let's see. Verse 6. Verse 5. All right, so in verse 4, the, uh, the dragon's tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. Okay, verse 5. Um... Well, verse 4. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered to, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. 
and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, not the pre-trib rapture. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war, was, not, and there will be, not, there is right now. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, that old serpent, you know, the serpent that, that was spoke to Eve? Well, duh, it's the same serpent. It's the old serpent. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Huh. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses, accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. Remember, Jesus said, if you deny him before men, he'll deny you before the Father. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. See, they're not going to deny Christ to save their lives. They acknowledge Christ. Christianity became uh, illegal, punishable by death, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Tell that to the pre-trib rapture people. You can't tell them nothing. Because God's deceived them. I, I just can't believe how they're deceived. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, and woe, oh, I'm sorry, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the seal, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. When the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child, and the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And if you're interested, people, I've got an entire playlist on Revelation chapter 12. I go through this in a lot more detail. Verse 17. And the dragon was wroth. He was angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war, war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, Satan doesn't care if you have the testimony of Jesus, but you don't keep the commandments. You could be a hitman for the mafia and murder people for a living and, and go to the Catholic Church on Sunday and say 20 Hail Marys and confess whatever to the priest. God, Satan doesn't care. But, he, but he's going to go to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And they asked Jesus, what was the great commandment in the law? Well, let's take a look. Well, here you go. Matthew 22, verse 35. Well, let's do 34. But when the Pharisees, those that's a denomination of Jews, it's like you got Baptists and Pentecostals and, you know, Methodists and Lutherans and Presbyterians. 
the Pharisees were just a denomination of the Jews. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees, Sadducees were another denomination of Jews. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, uh, this is a doctor of the law, the Bible law, that is. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, so he's trying, this guy's trying to trip up Jesus. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law, all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. Bingo. That's it. Now, there's a question of when is that war in Revelation 12? Some people say it hasn't happened yet. Some say it happened in the past. Uh, when did Satan fall? Well, that's a good question. Let's take a look. All right, so two questions. When did Satan fall? And when were the angels created? Well, let's go to Genesis 1, the beginning. Now I'm telling you people, if you've never read the Old Testament, you are being very foolish. All right, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the evening and the morning were the first day. Do you know that evening is the beginning of the day? According to the Bible. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. The firmament is basically the sky. Do you know that there, there was waters below and above? There were waters in the sky. And we're not just talking about clouds. Uh, basically, if you want to read about the, um, the world that then was before the flood, uh, it's alluded to in Job. Uh, Ken Hovind does a really great thing, H-O-V-I-N-D, on the, um, the water canopy before the flood of Noah. You know, the water absorbed all the damaging radiation. Perhaps that's why people lived so long back in the Old Testament days. And then after the flood, 120 days was it. So, you know, it's an interesting theory. It's not a salvational issue. Uh, but it, you know, if you want to know about what the world was like before the flood, it's kind of interesting. Verse 8, And God called the firmament heaven. You know, the heavens. And the evening and the morning were the second day. All right. Were the angels created on the first day? No. Were they created on the second day? No. Verse 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and upon the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. No angels created, right? And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the night from the uh, day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. 
And let there be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, that's the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, that's the moon. He made the stars also. Now, sometimes stars means lights up in the heavens, sometimes it's angels. So, you know, you could argue either way. Maybe this is just stars in the sky that you look at with a telescope, or maybe it also includes the, uh, the angels, of, like Job 38. So, either way, let's keep reading. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. So even if these stars that were just created were angels, in verse 18 it says, and God saw that it was good. So the angels, if they are created then, they're good. There's no war in heaven yet, right? And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Where do the fowls fly? Birds. In the sky, the heaven, the firmament. Right? The Bible will interpret the Bible if you let it. At least the King James will. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after its kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image. Um, guess what? A lot of people say, This is God be talking about the angels, but you know what? Let me tell you something. God created all things, not the angels. God created the angels, but the great angels didn't create anything. They're talking here about the Godhead. Some people call it the Trinity. I prefer to use the word Godhead because that's in the Bible. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God made man with a body, a soul, and a spirit. And God made man in his image. And if God made man in his image, and man has a body, soul, and a spirit, which are separate, three parts making one man, and God made us in his image. How many parts is God? Think about that. I do an entire Bible study on that. All right, we're going to have to stop right here because it's almost 30 minutes. All right, um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to come back to uh, Genesis 1 and verse 26 soon.